Snestruck. The first comic book series I got into as a kid was X-Men. I got into it right when the Fatal Attraction story arc started, and it eventually got me into the X-Men cartoon that aired on Saturday mornings on Fox. So, needless to say, I've been watching the reboot of that show, X-Men 97, and I'm really digging it, since it features some unexpected twists and surprises while staying true to the characters, and if you're at all into X-Men, I highly recommend checking that out. But in the meantime, the reboot brought me back to the Super Nintendo game X-Men Mutant Apocalypse made by Capcom and released in November 1994, right in the middle of the original cartoon's run. The game starts by laying out the usual X-Men story backdrop, where mutants are persecuted by humans for being different and scary and all that, and you've got people with varying approaches to deal with this problem. Professor X thinks that everyone can and should get along just fine, Magneto thinks humans should be left behind by the superior mutant race, and Apocalypse thinks everyone should die, hence, you know, the name Apocalypse. In this game, Apocalypse is using the island nation of Genosha to hold mutants captive for slave labor, so it's up to the X-Men to infiltrate different parts of the island to free everyone while defeating an army of sentinels, including evildoers like Queen Brood and Tusk, before facing Apocalypse, and then the story goes from there. You start out with a Mega Man-style menu where you have five mutants to choose from, Gambit, Psylocke, Wolverine, Cyclops, and Beast, with each character getting their own stage that they need to complete with a health meter and two lives to do so. Right away, Mutant Apocalypse makes a great first impression, making 16-bit pixel art versions of Jim Lee's artwork, which is really cool. The sprites and colors are all spot-on for the era, and the music and sound design are also top-notch. Again, there's big-time Mega Man X vibes here, and I wouldn't be surprised if some folks from Capcom worked on both the X series and Mutant Apocalypse, especially when it comes to the music. A lot of these tracks would not sound out of place in a Mega Man X game. This is a side-scrolling action platformer strictly on a 2D plane, which means each character gets their own fighting game-style inputs. For example, Wolverine can do a Berserker attack by doing a quarter roll forward and pressing Y, the same as you would a Hadouken in Street Fighter. He can also do a mid-air Berserker by pressing down and Y while you're in mid-air, and he can climb walls as well. There's no special inputs to activate mutant powers since they're always on, so that's nice. Most of the inputs are that simple though, nothing too complicated, although I can't help but think that a sequel could have potentially done a lot more with this setup, but whatever, what's here is solid. The first five levels are simple enough, although I should mention that if a level's designated character loses all their lives, then you can either find an extra life in another stage for that character, or you'll just have to beat that stage with someone else. After the first five levels are completed, you'll get a couple stages where you can pick from any of the five characters, and for those levels, you'll need to pick the right character, similar to picking the right boss weapon in Mega Man. The first level goes through the Genosha Forest, where you end up fighting Queen Brood, and if you pick Gambit, you can just stand here and throw endless projectiles till it's dead. Picking a melee character like Wolverine or Beast can make this fight a bit tougher if that's what you're into. After that, you get a stage with these little red goblins bouncing around everywhere, so it makes sense to pick someone quicker, like Wolverine or Psylocke, to knock them out before taking out Tusk. But then from there, you fight Apocalypse, and this is where the game starts to get really tough. First, you have to outrun a flow of lava by blasting through these barriers. The easiest way to get through this is with Cyclops. In fact, that's the only way I've been able to get through this part, because touching lava is instant death. And if you're using a melee character, good freaking luck. Once you get to Apocalypse, you'll find he teleports quickly, attacks quickly, and ruins your life quickly, so you're better off constantly moving and keeping your distance with a character like Cyclops. Then things start to get just plain goofy. You'd think beating Apocalypse would be the end of the game, but no, the game has to awkwardly shoehorn in a few more villains. Magneto shows up out of nowhere saying, Hey, good job saving Genosha, but I'ma blow it up from space, how about them apples? Professor X then comes up with the brilliant idea of having the X-Men risk life and limb, training in the Danger Room against Omega Red and Juggernaut. And these boss fights are not easy. You can't even get close to Omega Red, or he'll flail his tentacles around like a child. This attack nearly takes out half your life, by the way. Juggernaut is similarly stupid, where not even Cyclops' laser or Gambit's cards can affect him, but for some reason, Wolverine's dash attack does. Again, it's all about picking the right character, and yeah, sometimes you'll have no idea who that is, so it's good old trial and error. There's other annoying bits in this game as well, like after Psylocke beats this mini-boss, the ground starts falling beneath you, and how are you supposed to know that's coming? Well, by dying first, of course. 
Anyway, after quote-unquote training against Omega Red and Juggernaut, we're back to each character having their own level, only this time you only have to complete one of these to get to Magneto. This involves another massive pain-in-the-ass boss fight, this time against Exodus. No, not that Exodus. Thankfully, Magneto isn't too tough once you get the timing down right. I should mention quickly that X-Men Mutant Apocalypse has a fan-made remake that allows up to four players and includes new playable characters like Storm, Rogue, Colossus, Mystique, and a lot more, in addition to new moves like Desperation Attacks when you're low on health. It's pretty dang fun, and it's available for free, so check the description for the link. But as for the original Mutant Apocalypse game on Super Nintendo, this is a solid B-plus of a game if there ever was one. The original video for this game that I made for the channel doesn't really do it justice since, well, I was only getting a few hundred views at the time when I made it 10 years ago. Now it's up to 200,000 views, and had I known that many people would watch it, I would have, you know, done a better job and make the video a bit longer than 2 minutes and 50 seconds. But yeah, I thought it was worth revisiting this one because it is a very good game. It's well made, it looks and sounds great, and despite the wonky narrative and some annoying bits that you can only find out through trial and error, it's still a very good playthrough that offers a fair amount of challenge even if you're not all that into X-Men. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.